everybody, welcome to my channel for new battle report. Still playing with Wild Heart Og Khan list. Um, part of the project was also motivation to paint some of the miniatures, like the one you can see on, you can see on the top left. Uh, this is my general on a rock rock, so hunter on a rock rock, really in love with the model. And basically to play this wild at list gave me again the motivation to improve some of the exa existing model that I already had, like this one. So I took some time to yeah improve the model and yeah improve a little bit the painting and so on. So it was a really a joy for me to put this list on the table with real miniature and not only online. And I played a game against my usual opponent. Uh, Lishmeister not living far away from me. Basically, we are not a lot uh, living in the same area where, where I am, so he's the, the main guy with whom I'm playing the most uh, outside of tournament. Uh, here you have the whole list. So basically, yeah, all miniatures I think were, were done. Um, just this one is the Rock Rock, but it's not the one that I'm working on. I have another one that is looking way better, so it was like a kind of a substitute. Uh, giant looks uh, ready. Here you have the task cav. You have the general rock rock. You have the list below if you want the details. Here, this is my BSB on the task mount. I really like all the stuff that I've been able to uh, to put on this model. The tribesman unit. I've been working since and add some iron fist on the unit. Uh, the scrappling unit, uh, tribesman dart, and then my tree chaff piece and the mage. So looking not bad, uh, waiting for the rock rock to be finished and then it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's looking better and better and as always I think if you have a list that motivates you to train and to play then you're also motivated to, to paint obviously if you like to paint but uh, for me at least it's a great source of motivation to have a new list and um, yeah, the way of playing. It's also an occasion to bring out some other miniatures that I usually do. My opponent was playing the following list based um, mainly on Crusader ETC list. So you have 60, 62 Longhorn, 2 Gortax, 2 times uh, Feral Hound, 1 unit of Mongrel Riders, then 3 Ambushing units. And within the character section, he has a Druidism Master, an Adept Shamanism. Totally, he had 2 Binding Scroll, then he has a General with a 4 up, 4 up, and a BSB with a 2 up. So very solid list, uh, four units that are either bodyguard or stubborn. And basically not a lot of points that is easy to get. Uh, you need to get in close combat with those. Uh, if you have my list, basically I don't have much to, to deal with them from, that, from distance, thinking especially about the gore attacks. We played randomly and cycle and breakthrough. Breakthrough, obviously not the ideal, uh, yeah, ideal matchup for me. If you consider his list, because he has three scoring ambushing units, so not will not be easy to counter. I forgot to write down the spells, but basically he picked one and two from shamanism, and then Ruidism. He had obviously the throne, and then he picked one, a two, a four, and five. I think that was what he picked, and he had also the great totem bearer. So this is one of the key strengths of the list: is the amount of buff at his disposal, even when you use the binding scroll. Uh, yeah, it, it's still very strong magic phase to boost combat, which suits the list really well. Matchup analysis quickly. Um, I have a spare amount of threats. I'm going to try first to take out the Gortax as soon as possible and try to increase that advantage, obviously also dealing with the chaff. But the idea should be to try to get... Um, yeah, try to... I don't know what to say, but to get a good combo chart from different angle on a single long on unit. So to isolate like one unit of long on when I'm ready to go and then combo charge it. So that's 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 the idea if I want to win big. Not particularly interested in starting this game. I think since we're playing breakthrough, I need to know where he's going to be. He hasn't much range damage, so I would be totally okay to play second. I think that would be my mind strategy. A binding scroll. I know when face. I already face this list, as you can remember before etc. I played that matchup um, to try it, and I bounce horribly against the unit of long gone. So I'm going to pay attention. If I go in, I need to be sure that uh, I have enough strength to to deal with the unit. Basically, estimation. I felt kind of drawish. I think we have good chances of having breakthrough. Is more about do I want to fight him or not? Uh, how I'm going to use my mobility? 
uh, we could have more clash or less clash. It's really depending on, I think, more my willingness to go in CC than his because he's kind of limited. He's going to need to use one table edge to push forward and avoid me going all around him. So I think for him it's quite limited. It's more up to me what I'm going to try. And obviously since it's a training, I'm going to uh, try to fight him. So deployment, we had uh, the map with two impassable train that uh, form like a middle ground with a lot of room and then two smaller parts in the map. Uh, he put obviously all his ambush in ambush. I put my scout in scout, no big surprise here. He won the roll for side, took big center and small flank, gave me the big flanks. And then I told him you can start to deploy and he dropped everything for his first turn, which is no big surprise. He placed a unit of long on here to like close the corner and ensure that he gets a breakthrough in this part of the map. Then he put unit of dog, unit of dog, other unit of long on with the characters. One go attack here, second go attack here on the left, uh, the mage bunker, and that's it basically. My counter deployment. So, first of all, um, I thought about how to deal with the left go attack, and I felt combination between something that can frenzy bait of chaff him and a very good unit on the charge should be enough to deal with him. So, um, that's why I put rock rock on the left, and then you have my. Um, Sorry, scraplings plus the dog. So thinking either I'm going to chaff or I'm going to uh, frenzy bait him. Uh, then I thought about his right flank. So I felt this unit is really far away from the center. And I think if I put two giants here, I could have buy me enough time to delay him. Because what I want, like I told you, is beat the go attack and then uh, trying to get combo charge on this unit. So I think I could achieve that. Uh, that's why I put both the general and the Tuskus in front of his main unit. And then a bit more to the left here are my scoring unit that are going to try to go uh, straight away for the breakthrough in this part of the map. And maybe this unit with the mage could support in combat as well. So I felt this could be nice. And here I have my BSB also that should have more freedom to push here towards the middle. And yeah, like I said, right flank the giant to buy me time. And the trappers obviously put a counter on the field and are looking forward to put another one in the forest as soon as my turn one is going to start. His, uh, on his turn one, I didn't give him a, any good charges on the trappers, so he didn't charge them. Uh, his turn one, so he moved around the impassable with his go attack. Um, also, forgot to mention maybe, but one of the reasons why I didn't put anything on the, on the sides, anything not mobile enough, is the fact that he has ambushes. So I didn't want to put like a dog or something, or even the scraplings here on the left, because if he come out, shoot at me and then fight me and beat me I could be in trouble so that's why I kept everything compact in the middle that could be more sensitive to ambush basically so he chaffed the giant on the left push with the long on push with the long on uh, put the second chaff in position uh, put the go attack looking to the right so basically baiting me to charge and then counter charge and this one like I said move to the left in magic phase I dispel the throne, he got d6, strength 4, he failed it, uh, he got mr3 on this go attack and then with e5 dice, a swarm of insect on my channel which I didn't expect, I kept only 4 dice, didn't expect that, I should have let the throne go and keep all my dice for that which I didn't do and I got punished by suffering 2 wounds on my general so early in the game which is already a bad news. Um, my turn 1. Didn't take any of the charges. I use this my trapper as a chaff on the long gone, which we can debate about. I like the fact that the only unit that can charge me are the long on, and if they do, they are going to suffer a lot of DTs, and that could be interesting. I try to somehow block his ambush. Um, is coming out with three units on a three up, so likelihood is that he's going to be at least with two. He could even reroll for that. So I wanted to block his good option, which is center right, in my opinion, and leaving only on the left here with some options. But basically, I wanted to protect mainly my scoring unit with the crab here, my general, looking at the back to avoid anyone coming here. I think here on the right, we can debate whether or not that was a good choice. Not 100% sure that I made the right call. Um, obviously here the charge I couldn't take because then I get charged by the go attack and long on. So here I had no good charges but I could have looked the other way around. We can debate about that. I wanted to be sure that until he has no good way to enter and basically um, I would be safer. 
Then I push with my scoring unit, push with the BSB here, turn around, rock rock, starting to move forward with Scrappling. Uh, protected all my chaff piece in order for him to avoid that he comes out and shoot at my dogs. So I put them here in the middle and here in the middle and move forward with the Tuskers. The idea being I know that's going to chaff me next round. This was also one of the reasons why I turn around the crab. Basically making sure that I don't get frenzy bait and then counter charge. So I'm just looking the other way, making some zoning. And I know that some of these units ha will have to, t to get rid of them. In the magic phase, I got Swarm of Insect off on this. Kootak, who was in short range but with MR3, did two wounds to him and he dispelled Totemic Summon. Uh, his turn 2, he decided to charge the trappers and lost like 5 of them on the charge. Uh, chaff me again with, um, yeah, chaff me, not again, but chaff me, <laughs> uh, chaff the Tuskers, chaff them. Um, the dogs, also one of the, um, the ID behind this positioning is the fact that he's kind of blocked, he cannot move around, he needs to reform. Uh, this is also why I'm saying I could have turned around to maybe get advantage from that, because now he can freely turn around with the core attack and I don't see in the right spots where I could have put pressure and force him to chaff me and avoid them to push too much because they would have need to look that way so I felt I had better things to do maybe on here on this far right but anyway he charged that turn around the core attack and moved this core attack around the impassable here looking at me I was kind of surprised because I, I felt I have good chances of frenzy baiting him and then counter charging he went on the board with only one ambush, which was a, which was a bad news for me, and uh, that's it. In the magic phase, um, he tried to cast a Master of Earth on my chaff. I dispelled that. He failed the throne, and he got plus two resilience on the dogs. Um, close combat. I kill, I think, two of him, one or two, and he kills my guys in return and just post combat private. My turn. Um, I checked and I felt that I uh, am able to chaff him, so I prepare my chaff well enough to be able to chaff him, charge with the Tusker, reform and avoid him to charge me. So basically the Gortak can charge me, but then I position some counters, I turn around with the General. Uh, these guys are still ready here, I'm offering him a frenzy bait, On he can either charge them or charge them. Uh, in either cases I could counter charge with the Rocker Rock. Uh, he could also charge a chaff with both Gortax. Here I made a mistake. I by moving back with the BSB, looking at the ambush. I just I'm just a bit far away from 18 to give rollable, meaning he would have a terror check on a nine no reroll, which is a bit scary. Could have been just two inches back, and then I would have been safe. So this was a a poor decision for me, especially thinking that I'm not going to charge that far from the rest of my line, so it's more to zone him and push him back. So I felt here I could have done better than that. I took a risk here that was not necessary. Um, I continue to zone his whole part of the map to avoid any ambush or coming in, coming in. But to be fair, I think, again, this is again a mistake, I guess, because... For him, the right choice would be to ambush here behind his unit and push and protect them. If he ambush here behind me, uh, there's a good chance that I just turn around the monster, push him, get rid of the unit. So I felt he um, didn't do the right decision. And then uh, let's go magic. And obviously the rock rock was out of line of sight of the go attack. In the magic phase, a binding skull swarm of insect. I got hereditary on the Tusker and plus one resilience on the Tusker. So I'm virtually re uh, resilience seven. So in case Gortak charges me, I should be fine. Close combat, I kill all of these with impact, I guess, uh, more or less. And that's it. He's turn three. Uh, despite my two buffs, he decided to charge me with the Gortak on my Tusker, so we'll see how that goes. Then he charged my Chaff with the Longhorn. Um, he's kind of blocked behind his Gortak at the moment. And he passes the Frenzy on a 9, maximize no reroll to come in front here and make the charge impossible for the Rock Rock, which is well done. Uh, he continued to push here. He entered, like I mentioned before, in the better, best spot that he could have, which is just right here. Uh, I could have and should have avoided that or made other choice with these two guys. So yeah, feeling here I made some mistakes. Uh, I moved these guys back to avoid the easy charge for my BSB. In the magic phase, he got uh, I binding scroll stone skin because I felt this is now a key combat. And basically my thought process was he lost like eight. So he has only 23 left. 
uh, if he gets no, if he buffs a bit the Gortak, but no buffs here, and if I get rid of the Gortak, I could possibly have General Tuskus. Uh, could be enough to deal with the rest of them, to be honest. So we will see. Uh, Bind Scroll Stone Skin, he got. Um, the, uh, I dispel Tron, I dispel Distracting, and he got Regen 5 up on the Go Attack. What happened then in close combat? So here I put the math. Uh, Go Attack did totally 5 wounds to me. So I had Resilient 6, 7. He had. Uh, 6 and minus 1 to wound. He had D3 impact strength 6, so wounding me on 5 up, and then he had like. 6 attack on the 3 up rollable and then 5 up with little strike, multiple wound on the little strike. He did 5 wounds which is not a scandal, so here this is not exactly the math because I couldn't add the multiple wound, you can, and I didn't put impact it as well. So it's probably more between like 2 and 6 maybe the range, the green range more or less. Um, he did 5 wounds so I think no scandal here. And I went back, I think he had one wound lost on this guy, he recovered one, so I think he had five wounds left. And I did uh, what I should do, which is four wounds and not five, and he was still alive. So here I felt already this is a key part of the of the game that was played. Uh, I killed the chaff, I killed, I think, another one. My turn three. Um, I checked again that I could chaff his unit. If I kill the Gore attack, then he could overrun here, but I have 1, 2, 3 overrun ready, um, counter charge ready to counter charge him. And if I don't kill the Gore attack, then I can charge him with giant strength 7 next round. So I charge with my general on the flank on this Gore attack, move this guy sideways 3, uh, push the scoring, move everybody. The only problem that I had, I was I didn't have enough space to move this guy to push him 14, which was really annoying. Because, um, yeah, I would have liked to have an aggressive position, but I didn't find a way to move in between. I had too many units at the same spot, and I needed to have exact position to allow the crab to reform that way. So that was a bit annoying. I felt here I misplayed this piece. I should have been here high up the pitch to pressure him, and I didn't manage to do it. Um, because he's like kind of out of position with the chaff. And if I could have provided multiple charge, I could have done better. So, yeah, I felt not so the right choices for me. Um, yeah, I moved back with this giant as well because I felt I'm continuing to slow him down. He cannot allow me to move around. So that's just one giant to occupy all these forces is perfect for me. Magic face. Um... Magic face, magic face. I binding scroll break the spirit to avoid me casting hit on his uh, long horn, which makes sense. I got hereditary on the Tuscus. And then close combat. Uh, despite hereditary, so I'm not now on resilient six, he rolled like double six, which did five wounds, and he just one shot them before I strike. <sighs> and he recover wound in the process. Meaning the go attack is not dead, my Tuscus are dead, and now he's free to charge me because it's his turn. So <sighs> This is looking bad. He's turn 4, he charged my BSB. Makes sense. Charge my chaff. Um, shuffle things around, more or less. I uh, forgot to mention my general didn't kill with impact. I left him on one wound and then he strikes back. Did three wounds to me. So I have only one wound left. Uh, I kill him with the attack and I just overrun to be as far away as I could because I have only one wound left. So not also something I expected. This general is much more fragile than what I expected. Uh, yeah, so charge me, charge, charge. The rest explain in the magic phase. Also worth mentioning, he failed the march check here to march and chaff my um, giant, which was nice. Uh, so that I have still enough pieces to possibly charge, but my plan are a bit... Yeah, because of the general, basically my plan are just uh, down because I couldn't allow... My general to stand here, him charge me with the go attack, kill me, and then overrun into something that was not possible. So I needed to overrun, which blocks the tribesmen from charging here in this combat. So this is very, very annoying. Not something I wanted, but um, yeah, couldn't do much to avoid it. Uh, he got thrown in, regen in on this go attack, so he has regen 4 up. But then in close combat, I rode crazy, I did 2 wounds, he failed to regen, I killed the go attack. He did only 1 wound to me. So this is also crazy. I uh, was a bit maybe unlucky what happened on the Tusker, but here I'm very lucky to kill the go attack. Which puts me back in the game, to be honest. 
Uh, my turn 4. So <laughs> as you can see, this is one of the strengths of my list. I was here that close to him, everything very close, and one turn after, everything far away. So I just felt the option that I had, maybe it's worth talking about this. He reformed those guys to cover the charges on the chaff and the mage, which makes sense. But he's like uh, very wide now. So I felt if I could charge with the giant here, the BSB up top and stick him, I can bring the giant, bring the rock rock, bring the general, bring the tribesman, basically make everybody ready to counter charge later on. What I was afraid of is, first of all, I don't have any binding scroll anymore, meaning he could regrow, he could regen, he could stone skin, his body guards, so he could hold forever, first. Second is, if on the charge I get killed, which is not that unlikely, because he has a great weapon rerolling to wound attack, uh, if I get killed by, uh, like the BSB dies and so on, it could be a drama and I could get tabled. So I felt it's not, just not worth it. I move away, move these guys to eat the ambush, the rest for the breakthrough, uh, reposition Rock Rock. I think I, that wasn't the right decision because it's the only one looking at him. So I could have just uh, moved somewhere else or look a bit uh, another way around to avoid some frenzy check and so on. I move my general with one wound remaining as far as I could. I didn't felt I was here. Maybe 14, I could have been here, top would have been better, I don't know to be honest. Just move here and I wanted to hide behind the impossible next round I guess. Uh, move back my giant to look at his flank and put some pressure in my magic phase. I got a triple six on break the spirit, lose one wound on the, on the mage on four dice and I got break the spirit off on them. Which is nice because they won't march and I also got lucky getting a totemic summon with four dice against six here on his flank. So this is really nice. Um, his turn 5, yeah, just move, looking at my rock rock to tempt me to charge. He put the chaff in front, but those guys ready to come to charge. And um, that's more or less it, I guess. Uh, magic phase, he got the throne. I dispel d6 strength 5 on my general, but he got swarm of insect and kill it. I fail 7 rollable on them. They flee over the impassable, which was already a flea pass that I considered. So I now just need to rally them. The rest was okay, but I just lost 800 points of general because of that, which is very annoying, but nothing I can do to avoid that. Or my turn 5. I decided not to charge and push him in the flank. I tried to pin him down with the um, Totemic Summon by charging in the flank. I failed the march check on this guy that was bad place, so I minimized the contact in case he wants to charge me. Rally those guys on 7 rollable that went 1 wide to make sure round 6 I can break through, break through, get the secondary. I double charge here and get both of these. And basically in the magic phase I will get like a break the spirit on them I guess to avoid them charging me. Um, close combat, the BSB just kill me, I get rid of those guys and that's getting towards the end of the game so you just turn around looking at my giant, I think should have looked at the rock rock because I'm not sure I would charge with the giant uh, if the rock rock fail frenzy on 8 then I need to get into and he could kill me so I think that wasn't the right decision to turn around looking at the giant but anyway move, uh, yeah the BSB just kill my totemic summon last round which is annoying because I didn't pin him down and I cannot charge this round, which is, yeah, kind of annoying. Yeah, just everybody getting into breakthrough and so on. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then my, my round, I think nothing crazy. I passed the frenzy, luckily for me, and just went breakthrough and that's it. Uh, we ended up on a 10-10. I, I think here yeah, I miscalculated Gortak at less than 500 now, but, but still we got to... Um, to 10 10, he got my general, he got my Tuskers, which are very expensive pieces. Then my three pieces of chaff, I got some dogs, an ambush unit, and two go attacks. I think that's it. Uh, we both got the breakthrough deployment. I think I was right to let him drop uh, for first turn. I was happy to face only one long on brick, but I didn't manage to really get into a proper combat. We had a chaff war, so I triple chaff his unit without being able to really engage them, which was annoying. Not really sure. If I was right to counter the ambush on the right, I think the answer is, uh, I think it was a mistake because I wasn't too annoyed by him ambushing in my back. I think it would have been a mistake for him to do so because then I can kill them later even if I need to sacrifice a monster if that gets me breakthrough. 
after the binding scroll was used, going into CC was way too risky, like I told you. Uh, Rock Rock far too away from the action. I think I could have possibly exchanged also the places between the general and the other Rock Rock. Uh, my general would have been safer, I guess. And uh, yeah, just didn't move properly with that second Rock, which cost me at the end. Late game, unnecessary frenzy check, which I should have avoided. Huge flexibility with this list. I think it was really a pleasure to, yeah, just like I told you, turn uh, turn four, like everything away. It's it's done. It's over. I decide when I want to engage and where. And if I don't want to, I can just retreat easily. General seems very fragile. Love the model, but pff, man, these wounds get get away so easy because he gets hit very easy with defensive two, and then yeah, it's kind of hard. Especially if I have multiple combat going on, I cannot really buff him so much. And I think on Max's side, he could have avoided this ambush on the left that was just a bit given for free. I mean, nothing crazy could achieve with that one. So I think he should have just uh, put it, yeah, like behind the long run, like he did with the rest, and just minimize the number of points that he's going to give me, basically. Okay, guys, that's it for this battle report. I hope you liked it, and talk to you soon on the channel. Bye bye.